All right, so Deputy Price, tell me what training exercise we are filming today. We're fil uh, filming the pendulum pattern where Deputy Lo Master Deputy Looney is in the water. Um, if you imagine a pendulum in your head, as he goes from one end to the other, I let out a certain amount of line. And when he gets to the end I choose, I pull twice to let him know to change direction. Okay. Let out a set amount of line. We tie a knot to know where that line is. And then he turns around and goes again. So they're going in a very specific pattern. Very specific pattern. And your knots are at very specific intervals as well. Well, is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Um, or pretty about specific? shoulder length, shoulder, shoulder, arm, shoulder to arm length. Okay. Um, and it also depends on visibility. Okay. We know the visibility in Hartwell, especially after a storm, is not very, not very good. Right. Um, so I, I give him just a little bit. So this is how you're communicating with your diver underwater. Yes. And if he needs more line, he can tug twice on his end, and I will give him more line. Then we usually use that if he can see the object but can't reach it. Okay. And I keep my feet planted. I don't move around. That way, our pattern doesn't move around. Awesome. And you're getting some overhead drone footage today from Airworks to include in the episode. And here's some of the divers in the water. So after he finishes a certain pendulum pattern, will he come in or will you just move then and he'll stay in the water? He'll stay in the water where he finds it and okay. we will, uh, typically we'll send another diver down there to retrieve the object. Okay. But in this instance, we will probably have him bring the object up. Okay. And as you said, there with the, the rope pulls and tugs, there's very specific um, ones. One means something, two means something on his end and both your end, right? All the way to four. And they mean something for different, like if he's tugging, it means something different to me versus me tugging to him. Okay. See, I've picked that buoy for his turnaround point. So he hits that, I let him give two tugs. And he's just feeling with his hands right now, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, this is cool. Here's a card that shows. Two poles change direction. Three poles surface, four poles emergency. And then driver to tender, two poles more line, three poles object found, and four poles emergency. Excellent. Those are great to have. So that's kind of like your Miranda card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's our dummy card, but yes. Yeah, that's something when you remember when you're out on the water in the field. So he has nothing to find? Awesome. <laughs> so so this, is, this is what's going to be used. The, the air is on. Okay. This is your scuba cylinder. This is your BC. Um, you have weights in your BC. Okay. If you get, tip if you get in trouble at the bottom, you can't come up, you'll drop these weights. Okay. And you'll have that. This is how... You inflate your BC right here. This button. Okay. This is how you let air out of it. All right. Okay, I've got eight pounds of weight in here for you. Um, that, that should, that should be down. plenty enough to keep you down. Okay. Right. So once you're down, you, and we'll have divers in the water with you, helping you. So, um, you know, you need to stay buoyant and not come off the bottom. But, so that happens. This is your primary regulator. Okay. Um, this is one you're gonna breathe out of most of the time. All right. If if you feel like you can't breathe or you can't get air out of this, tell somebody this. Okay. That means Another you're out of air, you're having trouble breathing, mm -hmm. and somebody will hand off their octopus to you. Okay. And you'll start breathing out of it. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so here's, just, uh, sorry, here, yeah, here's, sure. here's a mask. All right. What you want to do, go up against your face, breathe in through your nose. If it seals, it's not going to leak. Keep all the hair out of the way. All right. Okay. If it doesn't seal, then we'll get you another mask. So just, yeah. Okay, seal it. Okay, good. All right, so put the strap on, make sure that it's um, tight enough for you. Yeah. You don't want it on so tight that it's going to create a squeeze against your face, but you don't want it so loose that when you go into water, your face is flooding with water. Yeah. Okay? And like I was telling you about with the Valsalva technique, when you get ready to go down, when you're ready to pinch your nose, you don't want to do this on surface, but when you're ready to go under, that okay. little nose piece right there, you have to take your hand, put it around the nose, and pinch your nose. Okay. And, and in this case, you, this is where as you're going down, you're going to 
pinch off and gently. blow gently through your nose to equalize your ears. Okay. Okay. Right. Now is that tight enough for you? Oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely okay. Tight. So right. if you don't want to pinch your nose, if okay. you swallow, hold your breath and swallow real big, mm -hmm. yeah. that, that'll clear it sometimes. Okay. okay. The main thing you need to think about is do not hold your breath. Right. Never hold your breath. Okay. Breathe in, breathe out normally. Breathe right. in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Don't hold your breath. Um, if you, and the reason behind that is if you're deep down mm -hmm. and you hold your breath when you come up, think of your lungs as balloons. When you come up, the air pressure, the deeper you go, the more, the more pressure you have on you and it compresses that balloon. When it comes up, it allows that balloon to expand. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so your lungs are the same as that balloon. Okay. Okay, and you're not going deep enough to really worry about Right. But you need to be aware not to hold your breath. Okay. That's why we're not holding the breath, because we don't want to risk a possible uh, air embolism. Okay. Okay. How long is it? The BC, the Bunsen compensator, is basically your elevator. Okay. Okay. It's actually using air to either rise you up or lack of air to drop you down. Okay. Okay. So that's the primary purpose yeah. of that. And, and this this is a technical BC. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we don't have um, the majority of guys on the team are have additional uh, training. Have additional yeah. training that allow us to do other stuff, um, go to greater depths, breathe different air mixtures. Yeah. Um, so and so that requires different equipment. Okay. The typical BC that you would see is called a vest style or jacket style, and it folds around you, and it's got this here, and it's got Places here for air. Okay. This one doesn't. Okay. So when you're when you're coming up, mm -hmm. you have to make yourself lean back because the way this wing is designed, if, if it's got air in it, it's going to push you face forward. Okay. Okay. So lean back when Le you're lean, yeah, lean back. All right. And you can yeah. you can let a little bit of air out of it just to kind of keep your you just want to keep your chest above water. Okay. So let air out of it so you're floating like that and lean back. And it'll let air out of the bottom here okay. and push it towards the top so that this is rising instead of this is rising. Okay. okay. All right, so go ahead and take a couple breaths out of this. Now, this is a Scoop Pro G650 series. Right. Um, this thing, basically, if you've got it wide open, it'll, give you, it'll fill your lungs full, basically. It's, it's designed to it breathe very, very easily for you. All right, All right. if it feels a little, that's that full open. All right, now try it. So whatever you're comfortable with right okay. now. Yeah, yeah. I think I liked it better before. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. So this this is your octopus. This is totally One of the things we always do is check and make sure all our air works. All right, I think it does. All right, all right. All right. Okay. So if you if you have to change regulators, mm -hmm. there's a button right here. That's There's a, a button right here, you can purge the water out before yeah, you put it in your mouth. Okay. Or your, the other option is to go ahead and put it in your mouth and instead of breathing <laughs> in, take uh, take a deep, you know, have a deep breath in your lungs and blow the, blow it out. Okay. Blow the water out. Clear the water out. Okay. okay. Anytime you take a breath in, especially if you take the regular air out of your mouth or anything, put the tip of the tongue against the roof of the mouth when you're breathing in, mm -hmm. whether you're using a snorkel or a regulator, that way any moisture that comes out will hit the top your tongue, not the back of your throat. Okay. Okay. That just cuts down on getting the gag reflex one. Okay. 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 So it's just some common sense that we want to teach y'all. Okay. All right. So the other thing is this one is designed for side mount diving, which means I have a tank here and I have a tank here. I don't dive with the tank on my back. Okay. Unless I'm diving for the rescue team, but it's got a crotch strap. Okay. Okay. You need to hook that crotch strap up because if you don't, your BC is going to float off of you. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. Serious. Sounds good. All right. All right. Now, let me ask you this real quick. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable with what we're going to do? Yeah. And you feel comfortable that, I mean, I'm being serious, this is no pressure. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't feel comfortable, I'd rather not put you in the water. Oh, no, no. This is fun. All yeah. right. And then we get you in there. We're going to give you a chance to take a couple of deep breaths first without filming or anything. Just get you comfortable with it. And as they say, enjoy this first exhilarating breaths of air underneath the water. Okay? <laughs> all right. And I know all lot your life you've been taught that you can't breathe underwater. And now we're telling you, yes, you can. All right. All right. So just take your time with it. Also, when you're using any of the equipment, just remember, too, you don't have to sit there and hold this down wide open. Otherwise, it's going to completely fill up. 
Anytime you want to rise up and down, you just do little beats. Okay. Okay. Like just little, little burst. Hey guys, we're Current of TV Scaly Adventures and I'm out here today with Frank Kuhn and we're out on one of the Anderson County uh, boats that they use out here on Lake Hartwell and we want to tell you about a new advancement in technology. One of the things I'll caveat with this is that sometimes in, out of a tragedy is born knowledge and from that a corrective action and Frank's going to tell us a little bit about that today. So Frank, tell us a little bit about what you've got today. All right. Well, sadly about two years ago, uh, one of our uh, police officers, uh, Master Deputy uh, Devin Hodges uh, died while on a training in, uh, exercise uh, using our uh, Sheriff's Department and uh, Men's Preparedness Department's uh, boats. And uh, sadly, uh, they were thrown overboard uh, while on a high speed turning maneuver. And unfortunately, his uh, PFD or his equipment got fouled up into the prop area and he drowned. Um, in experience of that tragedy, uh, his wife Crystal uh, has created a foundation in his name, which we're very thankful for because they have aligned themselves with this company that has developed this new technology electronic kill switch system. And so this allows any of the members of the dive team or the sheriff's department who is out on the water uh, the opportunity where if something goes wrong or if, if we lose a member or all the members on board, uh, this will kill the engine and also uh, allow us to then be able to make it back to the boat or uh, rescue that person if needed, okay? So the, the hallmark of this system is basically an electronic device that is mounted here with a sensor and uh, in conjunction with a, uh, another device that's either around our neck or around our wrist and uh, we basically will turn it on and activate it as we get ready to, to head out. Uh, each member that has one of these devices also activates it with a little press of the button. And then from there, if we get more than uh, 20 feet away from the boat, whether it's on either side or you know, stem to stern, uh, it will activate and immediately cut off the engine. Okay? Also, if someone should be standing close to the edge and suddenly fall overboard, uh, not only that, but it will notice that and then it will then activate and shut down the engine for us. So it's totally intuitive. You don't have to be have a man at the helm to be able no. to be safe. Traditionally, you know, we would have a device here, mm -hmm. uh, which was the kill switch, which required you having a, a cable cord. We actually still carry one as a manual just in case, but right. that was the traditional technique and that required someone to clip in. But that only counted for one crew member who was actually the, who was ever assigned the helm or skipper of the boat. Right. That didn't cover the other team members. So this is the advantage, and we really do appreciate Crystal's forethought and the fact that uh, in her creation of this foundation too, we found out that this foundation has been providing these devices to not only us, but to a lot of the sheriff's departments uh, throughout the state to help um, improve the safety for everyone. So Fran, one of the things that, like I said, when I opened this is that out of tragedy is often born knowledge and a change in ways that people do things. And so now we know it's good to know that the uh, law enforcement officers that are out here patrolling this lake are gonna be safe. And I know that that would mean a lot to the Hodges family. So, and we do appreciate it too from the Hodges family. So. Awesome. Another thing uh, I noticed while we were out today was I'm not sweating wearing a bunch of neoprene that we actually have these um, smaller uh, life vests. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, traditional life vests unfortunately uh, required uh, some cork or other type of material, polypropylene, that would be inserted inside of a full-size vest. Right. Uh, which is wonderful because we, of course, encourage everyone to wear a PFD while right. in the water. Uh, but unfortunately, in our region, when we get 85% plus humidity and 90 plus degree temperatures, yeah. uh, you're incredibly hot and sweaty. Uh, we've been thankful that uh, a technology that came out from the military and used on aircraft and such has been adapted to the, to the well, you'd say, nautical side, uh, in that basically these smaller vests actually are an inflatable bladder. And they use uh, either a manual pull device, mm -hmm. you can see it like on airplanes or aircraft if you ever get a commercial flight. Also, there's a sensor in here where if it gets wet, it dissolves a tablet that activates the, a CO2 cartridge that automatically inflates this vest. Interesting. So, so this enables us so that in, in, like in rough seas like we're experiencing right Kind of might be helpful now. Yeah, <laughs> if something happened again, if I should accidentally fall overboard, right. not only do I have a, an electronic sensor to help save us, but now if I fall overboard with this, 
this will automatically inflate. So if I get knocked unconscious or if I'm not able to uh, activate it myself, it'll do it you know, right. rapidly and help keep me up above the water. Right. And I think that's an important point that you make because you're obviously an accomplished uh, swimmer. You're a certified scuba diver with several certifications. But if you fell out of the boat and hit your head, it doesn't matter how good of a swimmer you are because you're incapacitated. So, you know, you always got to remember when you're out on the water to be safe, whether it's wearing a, a personal flotation device or, you know, if uh, you're a municipality working with these kill switches. So we just want to thank Frank for taking a moment today to uh, explain that to us. And we want to thank the Hodges family for their contribution to the safety of our office officers that are out here on the boat making sure you, that you have a safe time out here on the water so remember guys stay tuned to scaly adventures and always 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 be safe out on the water or any adventure that you're on stay tuned to scalyadventures.com